Hello, hello, hello. It's Mary Bartis and my cohort in crime, Cheryl Stokes. Good morning, good afternoon, whoever's listening. Hello, hello world. <laughs> um, it is this week or a housing update for May. Um, I think, Cheryl, we should just jump into it. So we'll do Sounds good. Again. So let's kind of talk through what's happening here in the market, um, which I think is kind of interesting. And What's on everybody's minds right now, Cheryl? Interest rates, inflation, recession, and housing prices. Would you yep. agree? Yes, absolutely. Every yeah. day. And and check out what Lynn uh, Kiefer says, the deputy chief economist at Freddie Mac. If you yeah, wish. Yeah, I'll I'll read it. Uh, mortgage rates are likely to continue to move higher throughout the balance of 2022, although the pace of rate increases is likely to moderate. That's what we think. Much of the increase in rates in early 2022 is in anticipation of what will happen later this year, especially with Federal Reserve interest rate policy. Yeah. And so, that's what we think as well. We think, in fact, I put out a video the other day that we think, you know, we might be kind of where we're at for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But not going up crazy because it felt like no. we went up crazy. It felt like we were going to get to a 100% interest rate at one point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and the earth was shattering and the sky was falling and Henny Penny was going around screaming to everyone. Yes. So the Fed and yet here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Here we are. And, re and let's remind everybody, Cheryl, what was your first mortgage? What was your percentage? My first mortgage was 13% negative amortization in 1982. I got somehow better 14%. Um, yay, but I'm not sure if I was negative amortization or not. Oh I think my I gosh. Not <laughs> smart enough to know what I was doing, but mine was like in 86. Yep. Um, so, you know, just put that in perspective. And what was it yesterday, Cheryl, just to give a perspective or maybe today? Mid fives, depending mid five. on the on the product, depending on the client, mid fives. So interest rates and how that impacts home prices. Um, one of the things, Keeping Current Matters went back and provided this source from Freddie Mac that all the way back to 1993 and how the Fed has adjusted interest rates and what's done with the home prices. Cheryl, check that out. Every time they've adjusted it has gone up in home prices. Right, home value has continued to increase. Exactly. Now, interesting enough, as this says, um, the interesting thing is what was the impact in rising rates on housing? Like how many sales did we do? Right, so, so it looks like home that, sales right? went down each time. Yep, yep. except for one anomaly in 2003. Right. But there's a couple other anomalies, Cheryl, back in 93, which it went up over 2%. Right. And and also in 05. Right. 05, 06. And we all know the anomaly of those years. Exactly. So if we take those bad boys out of these, you know, that increase of 2.38 and the yeah. final rate went to 9.2%, home sales went down. Yep. And then if you look, like we said, five and six, and you start to take those bad boys out, really interest rates on home sales have been kind of it's, negligible. Yeah, it's a moderate decline. Yeah. It's a moderate decline. It it slows the market a, a, a small amount, but prices are still increasing. People are still buying. And you and I have spoken about that during a recession. Home sales continue to grow. Exactly. And you see that in our market here that we saw a 2% increase in home sales in sold and the interest rate, interesting enough, went up. Yeah. Um, so home price appreciation since World War II, we would say dirt is a good investment. Cheryl, what do you think? Absolutely. I say that all the time. Best way to build familial wealth. I love it when you say it that way. It actually has a little music to my ears when you say it. Could you say it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> it is the best investment for familial wealth. I love it when she says it. I won't make you do it again, Cheryl. <laughs> um, but look what happened. Um, we're nothing like it. I know we've said this a million times, Cheryl. Nothing, nothing, nothing like it in the early 2000s of what happened. Because talk about what, you know, what our, your lender. Right. The industry doing. standards are so strong now. And sometimes, honestly, borrowers think that those standards are a little tedious frankly, 
But the reason we have the standards is just what you're seeing on that graph. It protects us from having high product risk with products that are uh, riskier and more likely to be foreclosed upon. It protects us from things like fraud. Um, all of our new standards lead us to have a high quality loan, enough equity in the property that the risk is lower. And we tend to keep those properties tend to stay with us longer. And you and I have both spoken in recent months about the fact that foreclosure rate is very, very, very low right now. And it speaks to the strength of the equity that we have in the homes that we hold. I love that. Now, interesting enough, if we look at the next slide, the equity in our homes that we have, when people are doing annual mortgage payouts, Cheryl, look at what's happening. What happened in 2005, six and eight, right? So at that point in time, part of the product risk is people were borrowing against their equity and taking cash out refinances, sometimes even over home value. We don't allow that to happen anymore. So again, the way we lend is leading to housing strength. Yeah. Yes. Thousand percent. So if you're worried about this bubble that the news is out there to terrify instead of clarify, as we all know, history is repeating itself. You know, I mean, all we can do is look back and then look and see what the analysts are saying. But Cheryl, what is uh, Odetta Kushi saying? So Odetta is saying the national LTV in Q4 2021 was 30.8%, the lowest in over three decades. In inflation adjusted terms, homeowners in Q4 2021 had an average of $307,000 in equity, which is a historic high. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. We have more equity in our homes now, and therefore we have more strength. Yeah. Can't say it any better than that. Now, what does it look like for home prices in the going forward? Cheryl, this is what really all these seven Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, CoreLogic, et cetera, Zellman, um, NAR are all saying those average of those seven analysts and forecasts are coming back at 9%. So if you're looking to buy, jumping in now is a great time. You're right? still going to get growth. We're not, you're still, you're not going to buy at the high and not build any more equity ever. You're still going to get great growth in year one and you will get continued growth over time. Absolutely. You fast forward that to what are they saying about the next five years? This 22 is a big year, but we're still, I mean, gosh, Cheryl, 4%, 3.6. I can't put my money in the bank and get this kind of return. No, not even close. You can't. And I really don't know that I want to put my money right now in the stock market or move it around because if you're like everybody else and you had money there, you probably took a loss. And when right. I it's it, a little I, volatile right now. And even volatile. with volatility and increasing rates, home value still builds. Absolutely. So dirt is great. Great, great, great. Now, here's an example. I buy something in 2022 for 360000 Nothing to do with interest rates, nothing to do with anything else. And look what happens over the next um, five years. I get about $100,000 right. in equity appreciation. Right. And if you think about that, this is where you talk about the hedge and in inflation. Because you've purchased at a certain price. You have an interest rate, a fixed, theoretically, a fixed interest rate. You know what your housing payment is going to be. You're building equity, and while paying that fixed interest rate, you're lowering the loan to value, right? You're taking down the loan and principal payments. Mm -hmm. So you're building equity that way as well. And that's where that familial wealth comes in. You've paid down the loan, so you have more equity based on your original loan amount, and you're getting growth just by the growth of property values, and you're hedging inflation because your fixed payment is buying equity. It's not like paying rent and getting an increase in rent every year, which is kind of like 100% interest. Well, you know, it's interesting. You take that one step further. And you, if we say um, inflation is 8.5, 8, 8.3, 8, 8.6, somewhere in there, 8.5, mm -hmm. and you just said it's around at five and a half, 
interest rate. It's actually like someone's giving you 3% more money just to borrow money. Right. Right. I'll take and that. You're every building day. equity at the same time. Yes. So I have inflation because I've got a mortgage and I'm yep. tracking up with that. I'm building equity. I, you know, it's a win-win to it jump is. in now. It is. And really, you know, mid fives, frankly, we were getting into the fives in 2018. So a healthy market, you're going to be in the five sixes anyway. Having rates below that for the last two years is another anomaly that's really, um, and it was done to help spur growth and keep us solvent, but that's not where you normally want to be. It's not where the government or the banks or financial institutions are going to let us stay. Right. 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 Because it's not right. healthy we for can't. anybody. Right. We can't. Yeah. Now, Cheryl, something else I want to talk about here real quick, though, is U.S. population by age in 2020. So we just did the census. The boomers are shrinking. They were the largest population yep. we had. Look at what's happening with millennials and Gen X or Gen Z. They've. Yep. They're both well above 80 million. And those millennials right now are somewhere between 23 and 40. Yes. The Gen so, Zs are two to 22. So they're coming up. So if we look at the next 10 years, they're really are folks that are buying. Right. So what you're actually seeing, I think, and we've talked about this before, you still have desire to buy with the baby boomers, the tail end of us. I'm at the tail end of baby boomers. You still have Gen X purchasing, but you have the millennials in the height of their buying period of their life. And they're going to continue to buy into retirement. And then the Gen Zs are right behind them just as strong. So when people think we're going to have a bubble, the reason we're not is because the demand is going to remain for 10 years or more, just based on sheer population. We have to live somewhere. Right. Right. We right. have we're to have houses. to stay with their parents forever. Right. There's going to be a continuous demand for quite some time. So this was another study that the National Association of Realtors did. Cheryl, you want to go ahead and read that? Sure. By virtue of sheer numbers, millennials are defining the trends of today's housing market. The age group now accounts for 43% of all home buyers so far in 22. That's so, amazing. I, this is just amazing. Look at this chart. So they've bit, split it between older Gen Y's millennials and younger Gen Y millennials. And look at that. And when you, when you look at this whole buyer pool. Buyer is in the dark. Yeah. Um, the dark blue, the lighter blue is the sellers. You know, our biggest seller pools are in the younger boomers, you know, and the um, Gen Xers. Right. And if you combine just the millennials and the Gen Xers, that's 65% of the buyers in the market. Huge. 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 So, you know, Cheryl, People are like, okay, that's all well and good. But as always, what's happening in our area? Well, look at this. So we've been talking about this. I have this one chart, Cheryl, you might remember last month, I was super stoked about my chart. <laughs> <laughs> if you got to the video at that point and fast forwarded through it because I told everybody, it was like my art project. I thought maybe I should do it a little simpler this month because what I'm hearing right now is, uh, oh, there's a ton of inventory coming on the market, tons and tons. and we're going to blow it up with inventory. Well, here is the chart between March and April. Of course, we're at the end of May because we were busy in the beginning of May. Yep. And look, homes for sales has gone up 17.6, but that would happen anyway because people that have um, decided that they really weren't motivated and they want to try these really, really high sellers, astronomical prices of the market, have yep. their house or property on there, and they've been sitting. So we have more inventory of that, but keep in mind, and I'm going to remind you all where we were in January of 19 coming into this, new listings are down. That's normal in April. We start to go down right. um, because May is usually a quiet breathing month. And then we go into summer season and then, you know, September's a quiet month in our market down here. 
um, typically. And then we get, because, you know, either you're a primary looking for schools and want to move during those right. times, right. or you're coming down from somewhere else and want to move here. So look at the total listings, Cheryl, is up by about 3.7%. Is that astronomical? That is uh, moderate to low. Right. And when you look at that compared to that next, uh, right to the next left of it, 3,513 properties for sale between new and total. In January of 19, we had 10,000. Right. So we do not have inventory, my friends. And I get that over and over and over again. Oh my gosh, the sky is falling. You know, Henny Penny's running around, Chicken Little. We got the whole thing going on. We don't have a ton of inventory. We, right. As a matter of fact, have less new listings coming on, which is very typical for this time of year for us. So having said that, total sales are a little flat. They're at 2% month over month, March to April. Not overly surprising, is it, Cheryl? No, it's not. What's been bouncing around? Um. I it's, it's not surprising at all. Interest rates have been bouncing around. I think we've leveled off. I think the market is leveling off. So I think what we're going to see is maybe a little bit more inventory here or there, but I think we have found a steady market pace. And the um, panic of 2020 and 2021, the panic buying is gone, but the buyers are still there. And it's a matter of, are we going to have inventory for the buyers to find? And what they want, let's face it. And what I'm they working want. with some amazing people and they came in wanting one thing and now they want something totally different and they've taken their price point up almost a million dollars. Right. You know, so let's get what you want. Let's find the product that you want in the area that you want to be. That's, that's the name of the game to begin with it anyway. Absolutely. Because in that, those available listings, 3,500, there's a wide range of product type and um, a price. So you've just got to find the right lane for your buyer. Absolutely. So last slide before we wrap up, Cheryl, again, uh, 2022 Naples Board of Realtors market data as provided by InfoSparks. Listings are down just a teeny bit year over year, which would be normal, right? Um, when I compare, what did we just end with? April to April of last year. Um, home sales are down, which isn't unusual either because we don't have inventory. Right. A look at the average close price. Up 38%. And I, I totally concur with that. I mean, that's easily seen in the closed sales. Yeah, absolutely. So Cheryl, we end with our big question. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing the big finale. Hello, here I am again. Is it time to move? <laughs> is it time to move? We don't know if it is or not for you. And whether we're, you know, Cheryl and I are the right folks to help you do it, but we sure would love to. And at the end of the day, it really isn't about the statistics or anything, but what we do with the statistics is really more help on you to have understanding of what's happening yep. and not be afraid by what the news is putting out there and every other source so that you can make your dreams and desires come true. Um, Cheryl, last parting thoughts? Um, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I would just say um, for those people who are worried on the lending side that rates are preventative in buying, they're not. Um, I talk about this every day. We're at a good median point. People can still qualify. And what's really key is finding a local lender that can walk you through that financial path and find your way through it. Um, I very rarely can't find a way for someone to get to their end goal. It may be a goal a week from now, or it may be a goal six months from now, but um, that lender can help you create the, the path for home ownership. And that's really the most important thing is stay positive because it's still a good time. It's a great time. If you have buyer fatigue, because you just can't find what you're looking for, pause, breathe, and then reset the priorities of what's really important to exactly. you and bring that together with, um, you know, Cheryl from a standpoint of what does it take to get what I really, 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 really want as who was it? The Spice Girls sang. I won't think I'm into that mode. I just was talking about that song yesterday. I'll tell you 
what you want, what I really, really want. That's what we need to know. You need to know that. And I do too. I can help set the goals. You can find the property. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Until next month, have a great um, holiday, Memorial Day, as we look back on, you know, those that really let us be free. So, ciao.